Hola, let's talk tech. You trying a new catchphrase? Don't, shit. Okay, welcome to PC Games Zen, powered by positivity. Let's just crack on, because PC hardware waits for no human. There's always something new on the horizon, some high performance slice of silicon ready to become your next object of technological desire, some new chip that's going to make everything worthwhile, and finally deliver that perfect gaming PC you've always dreamed of. Yeah, but as soon as that new mega core AMD Ryzen 3950X processor or super speedy Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti graphics card arrives, we're on to the next thing, fantasizing about whatever the engineers are going to come up with next. But when is it time to say no more? When is it time to just be happy with what you've got and just play some games in the best way your current gaming PC can without worrying about which part you're going to rip out next? Such is the way of the modern human that we're always wanting more. But we're here to remind you that even an ancient gaming rig is able to deliver a genuinely impressive experience. Behold, the Rexpec PC. We love the PC because it's such an endlessly upgradable platform and because it's an endlessly backwards compatible one too. Can you think of a console from 2011 that's still capable of playing Gears 5 comfortably on the highest graphical settings? Let's save you some brain power, there isn't one. But the Rexpec, our junkyard PC cobbled together from the leftover parts of other better people's upgrades, can still push 1080p gaming into your eyeballs at a surprising frame rate of knots. The 8-year-old Intel processor and 5-year-old Nvidia graphics cards have still got enough about them to ensure that you can still play with the latest games without resorting to a slideshow. Shit, it's a mess of my coffee. For its central processing, we've got 2011's Intel Core i5-2500K. It's still a fine-ass CPU that's propped up many a high-performance gaming rig of PC pattern, and one that I would wager still runs a good many to this day. Likewise, the NVIDIA GTX 970, vilified as it was for its wonky video memory, is still an impressively powerful GPU. It was a $300 plus graphics card back at launch in 2014, and even around its fifth anniversary, it's capable of powering pretty much any modern game you fling its way. Our Rexpec rig is kitted out with an MSI Z77 gaming motherboard, 8GB of rather middling 2133 DDR3 memory, 250GB crucial SSD, and a 1TB hard drive keeping our Steam and Epic libraries spinning. In the long, long ago, this would have been a pricey machine, but today you're looking at a full gaming PC for the price of a graphics card that could barely keep up with its gaming performance. Less if you just dump a dive parts like we did. And this is also when overclocking comes into its own. We can actually use it for what it's meant for. No, not grabbing a few extra megahertz so you can show off to your mates on hardware bot, but actually just trying to squeeze as much performance out of your aging hardware as possible, because you just can't go out and buy a new chip every few months. Our resolutely quad-core 2500K will happily chunter along all day with all its cores running at 4.5 gigahertz while sitting under a $20 air cooler. That's a relatively chunky 800 megahertz overclock and lets us squeeze out an extra FPS or two in our modern games. As for our graphics card, well, that would have seemed a little tougher to crank up. We've dug up a small form factor ASUS GTX 970 out of a skip, and its limited cooler ought to make it difficult to get much extra pace out of the Maxwell GPU. But Nvidia's 5-year-old 28 nanometer architecture was a mighty overclocker, and even the GM204 silicon at the heart of this compact card will happily take another 200 megahertz of extra clock speed without breaking a sweat. With both the CPU and GPU clocked up, we can enjoy a nice little free performance bump in pretty much every game we've tested. And neither of these overclocks are particularly stressing of the geriatric rig either. We can leave these settings in place as standard and never look back. It has to be said that at 1080p, our 8-year-old CPU and 5-year-old graphics card aren't capable of hitting 60 FPS in every game at their maximum settings. That's probably a given, and you surely wouldn't expect the poor wee thing to deliver that sort of performance this far down the line. That said, there are exceptions, with Civilization VI, Far Cry New Dawn and F1 2019 all getting incredibly close or topping the 60fps mark with our comfortably overclocked rig. And with some studious settings tweakery, it's surprisingly easy to get the performance on all modern titles we set up tested above the 60fps mark without losing too much in the way of visual fidelity. Most of the time you'd have to look real hard to see the difference, especially with a moving in-game image. On the highest 1080p settings, Assassin's Creed Odyssey does chug on the rec spec, and even overclocking the 2500K and GTX 970 doesn't really make a dent in it. But by switching to the high preset, knocking down the anti-aliasing and texture, shadows, reflections, and volumetric clouds, you manage to hit a comfortable 60fps on average. You can just about see the difference in moving images, but it's not really huge considering the frame rate performance you're getting. Civilization VI isn't too far off the 60fps 1080p average even on its stock ultra settings. Overclocking isn't enough to get it above the requisite frame rate mark, but turning off cloud shadows and knocking the shadow resolution down to 2048 by 2048 just about is. Even at the stock speeds of the geriatric Intel and Nvidia GPU CPU combination, we were getting a rec spec average of just about 60 frames per second on ultra anyways. 
that after a judicious beating with the overclocking stick, we've managed to comfortably top the average and get a little closer on the minimums too, delivering a smooth gaming experience. The latest Formula One game likewise just needs a little overclocking love to get it from the super close stock performance up above the 60 FPS mark at 1080p and ultra settings. With the CPU and GPU pushed not even to their respective limits, we're almost getting a rock solid minimum 60 FPS. Who would have thought that games launching late in 2019 would be so forgiving of last, last gen graphics hardware? Gears 5 actually delivers an impressively slick gaming performance on their ultra 1080p settings. You can leave it to the game to adjust settings dynamically to hit the 60 FPS minimum, but that just ends up scaling the resolution down to 76% of 1080p, which doesn't look too great. Not the in-game settings down from ultra to high, however, and you get a solid 67 FPS. The Metro games have never been the most forgiving titles, which is one of the main reasons we've been using them in GPU benchmarking since the dawn of time. But while you're missing even the 30 FPS mark on Ultra at stock settings, the normal preset with 75% shading enabled will get you well above 60 FPS. The shadows, the jungle, the unnecessarily murderous Lara. The latest Tomb Raider has all these things, plus pretty decent rec spec performance too. The DirectX 12 implementation is inevitably a bit balked. Gears 5 is genuinely the only effective use we've seen in ages, but DirectX 11 we're getting solid frame rates with just a little overclocking. Switching to the high preset with pure hair knocked back and the screen space reflections, anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion turned off, we're easily topping the 60 FPS mark. The achingly beautiful Total War Three Kingdoms is another GPU hog. Again, the Total War series has been ripe for graphics card benchmarking over the years. But while its top settings are out of easy reach for the Rexpec PC, it doesn't take a lot of settings pruning to get above the 60 FPS mark at 1080p. Using the high preset instead, switching to FXAA, medium unit size and detail, as well as ditching screen space shadows, we've got a beautifully running beautiful game. So there it is, proof positive that you don't have to drop a small fortune on a new PC every time a new game or a new slice of silicon comes out just to be able to play at 60 frames per second with beautiful PC visuals. It's easy to get locked into the upgrade dance every time something new gets flashed in front of your face, or some jerk Redditor comes looking for approbation with, this is my new Titan RTX build, what do you guys think? Yeah, we think you're a jerk. Yeah, real jerk. But when nearly a third of PC gamers on Steam are still running 1080p as their primary resolution, it's worth remembering that you don't need a monster rig to be able to hit 60 FPS in even the latest games. Some PC hardware upgrades are then about hubris and not necessity. But equally, you don't need to feel left out if you can't afford to spend big boosting the specs of your aging PC. As much as PC gaming can be about hoarding the fastest graphics cards and the most powerful processors, it's also about being the most accessible gaming platform on the planet that can cater to those on a shoestring as well as those sitting on a fortune. To be fair, you could cobble together a Rexpec gaming PC from eBay spares, though you will obviously never 100% know the provenance of whatever second-hand parts you source. Building a gaming rig from used components is a great way to start if you can't afford the best new bits. Mm. And a little overclocking and some judicious tweaking of the in-game settings is all it takes to get a great gaming PC experience on even a Rexpec gaming PC. Yeah, so thanks for watching. We do so hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And also check back at PC Games End for more from us and also on the website for more in hardware and gaming. See you next time. Goodbye.